there, my name is Amanda. I typically teach my classes out at the beautiful Essential Farms Yoga Studio, but for the time being, I am teaching these classes out of the comfort of my home. Uh, if you're a new viewer, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. If you are a returning viewer and practicer, welcome back. I'm so happy that you are here. Now, uh, if you like this video, which I hope you do, uh, please don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the Essential Farms YouTube channel, because when you do that, it helps that others are able to find these videos and to practice along well, as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for today's practice, I have our typical props that I always recommend that you have nearby or handy, um, a blanket, a yoga strap and two yoga blocks. Now, uh, remember, if you don't have these, um, this extra equipment, uh, this, these extra yoga props, you can absolutely still practice with me today. So let's go ahead and get started. So for today's practice, I thought we would take um, Lotus Hand Mudra. Now, Lotus Hand Mudra, it helps to denote feelings of love, compassion, um, grace, beauty to um, towards others and to ourself as well. Um, it also helps to, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? I wrote it down just so I didn't forget, awaken our body's uh, self-healing power. So I'm going to scoot a little closer towards the towards the camera so you can see what exactly what my hands are doing. And I'm even going to take my blanket and hello <laughs> and come a little closer. OK, so Lotus Mudra, you're going to take the base of your palms to touch and then your fingers are going to um, be turned up towards the sky. And I'm just going to take the outside of my my thumbs to touch and outside of my my pinky fingers to touch so our, our hands make a little a little lotus flower and then we're just going to place the hands in in front of the heart so sitting up nice and tall now if your hands start to feel um crampy agitated holding this mudra don't forget your hands aren't trapped here um just release the hand mudra and you can have hands resting in the lap or on the thighs or the knees but hands are going to come to rest in front of the heart. Just relax the arms, relax your shoulders, sitting up nice and tall. Go ahead and close your eyes if you haven't done so already. Or if closing your eyes makes you feel sleepy, keeping the eyes open, but having a soft, steady gaze out in front of you. So as mentioned, sitting up nice and tall, crown of the head gently reaches towards the sky, chin parallel to the earth, shoulders relaxed away from the ears, and allow your sit bones to sink and be heavy into your support or into the earth. To help transition into this time of practice, I invite you to take three nice full inhales through your nose and just exhale them out through the mouth, just at your own pace here. And with that, just coming back to your normal breath cycle here. Taking a moment in your mind, maybe welcoming yourself to your practice, beginning to allow yourself to get settled in to this time and into the space that we've set aside for ourselves today. And remembering throughout our practice to only move in ways that best suits our practice. So during the warm up, 
maybe tuning in to any areas that feel a little cranky, a little tense, stressed, and keeping those areas in mind throughout your practice and honoring your body today throughout this practice. And even carrying that with you, that attitude with you off your mat and into your day. Feeling the warmth of your hands gently resting on the heart. Feeling the thumbs touch, pinkies touch. Noticing the body touches your support, the earth. The clothing touches skin. Nice, long, satisfying inhales, exhales through the nose. Getting a little more settled in with each breath. And if any thoughts start to bubble up, note the thoughts, try not to hold on to them or make storylines out of your thoughts, but allowing them to pass from the mind like a cloud being carried away on a breeze as you come back to your breath, as we inhale and exhale through the nose. In the next few minutes here, I invite you and encourage you to set an intention for your yoga practice today. You can do so by saying it three times mentally and gently letting it go. Now, in your own time, please begin to allow your eyes to flutter open. And from here, we're going to come right into extended child's pose. So I'm gonna back up and get onto my mat. Uh, feel free to go ahead and give your fingers a wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Circle the wrists while I get back onto my mat. And as mentioned, we're going to come right into extended child's pose. So for extended child's pose, come towards the end of your mat. And we're going to then take the knees as wide as feels good to your hips today. Big toes are touching. And then from here, we reach, extend the arms out in front of us, undersides of arms lifting away from the mat as we rest the forehead to the earth or a yoga block.
So taking those nice, long, satisfying inhales, exhales through the nose. Stay here or come up onto fingertips. And if you're on fingertips, go and bring palms back to the earth. Gently drop the elbows so uh, forearms are resting to your mat. Take palms together, thumbs towards the back of your neck, and then allow your elbows to begin to walk forward towards the front of your mat, and then allow the hips to resink towards the heels. And from here, bringing your palms back to the earth, hands about shoulder distance apart here. Now, lifting the hips up to release the big toes. Go ahead and take knees about hip distance apart here. And we're going to come into puppy pose. So for puppy pose, you're essentially going to be reaching, extending the arms forward as you send the hips back, kind of like how dogs, not just puppies, kind of get into that play stance. If you have a dog, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, and allow the heart to release towards the earth. Now you can look forward or you can look down towards your mat. And as you inhale, exhale here, go ahead and lift the hips, begin to walk the hands back towards you so hands are stacked under the shoulders. Inhale here, and then as you exhale, we're going to release all the way to the belly. Move any props out of your way. Wrists at the bottom of the rib cage, elbows drawn alongside body to spiral the inner thighs towards each other. Nice full inhale as you lift the heart, shoot the elbows towards the back of your mat as you lift the heart and relax your shoulders away from the ears to come into our first cobra. Now as you exhale, soften to the earth, tuck the toes under, hands stack them or shoulders, downward facing dog. So using the strength of your hands, arms, to gently push yourself up to your downward facing dog. As always, don't hesitate to walk your down dog out. Stretch one heel down, then the other. You can even, <clears throat> excuse me, wiggle the hips and even gently shake that from side to side, perhaps up and down. And exhale, release the knees down, untuck the toes. Let's come all the way onto the belly for cobra. Inhale it up. Exhale it down. Down dog. Exhale, release the knees down, untuck the toes once again. Belly for cobra, inhale it up. Exhale, release to the earth, down dog. Now, from downward facing dog, stay here if this feels good to you here, or if you'd like to join me in three-legged down dog, you'll step your left foot closer to the center of your mat. Inhale, kick your right leg high to the sky. Head and neck is heavy here. And looking up towards the fingertips, let's step the right foot forward. Help it forward as needed. You can always grab it gently behind the knee and help guide it forward. Low lunge, 
spiral that inner left thigh, release the back knee down, top of the foot down. Now you can absolutely take some extra cushion under the knee by folding a, a mat in, or if you have a blanket handy, stick that under your knee, that's fine too. So framing that front foot, allowing the hips to sink towards the earth here. Shoulders relaxed away from the ears. Now, if you have yoga blocks handy, Go ahead and grab them, place them under the shoulders. Again, you don't have to have blocks here. You can keep palms to the floor or even make fists here instead. I like the addition of blocks and uh, low lunges. It just, um, you're able to sit up a little bit taller. The shoulders aren't so crunched up by the ears. So that's why I personally like to add blocks to uh, lunges. But as mentioned, allow the hips to sink towards the floor, knees coming straight out from the hip, press down through this front ball mount of your right big toe. And we'll pause here. If you'd like a little extra stretch through that left hip flexor, if you've practiced with me before, you know what I'm gonna say. Um, we're just gonna draw that left knee forward along the mat towards the front of our mat. And it's not a big movement really at all. So we press into the earth, press or press into the blocks if you're using them. Draw your left knee forward, and then I'm gonna inch my right foot forward and then I'm gonna re-allow my hips to sink towards the earth. Shoulders relaxed. You can stay here or maybe try bringing hands to rest to your knee. If you feel up for it, press into the top of your back foot to take the arms up alongside your ears. Inhale, as you exhale, frame your front foot and let's come to our tabletop position. I'm gonna reconfigure for our downward facing dog. So I'm just gonna set my blocks out of my way. As I place my hands down, make sure your fingers are fanned spread wide and go ahead and tuck your toes under and we'll pop up and back to downward facing dog. Now, if your shoulders are tight, and your shoulders are starting to drift towards your wrists, please bend your knees in your downward facing dog. Or you can also bend your knees deeply if your hamstrings are really tight. And again, feel free to pedal things out here. Wiggle the hips, and gently shake the head from side to side, up and down. Now stay here or come into three-legged down dog with me once again. So I'm gonna set my right foot more towards the center of my mat. Inhale, kick the left leg towards the sky. Head and neck is heavy. Continue to press down through your left heel. Looking up towards the fingertips, let's step our left foot forward. Help it forward as needed. Now spiraling that inner right thigh to then release the back knee down. And again, take some extra cushion there. If if you like, I would like a little extra cushion on this side. <laughs> Untuck the back toes, find your yoga blocks if you like. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Knees coming out from the hip, not falling in or out. Let's pause here. And to move a little deeper into that right hip flexor, I'm going to slide that right knee towards the front of my mat, and I'm going to shimmy or walk inch that left foot forward a bit further to then allow my hips to sink further. And I'm even going to take my blocks down a notch. Now stay here, or maybe try bringing your hands to the top of your knee. Stay here if this feels best for you in your practice today, or maybe see what it feels like to take the arms up. If you took the arms up, spread the fingers, look to your horizon, or maybe try looking up this side. Inhale as you exhale. Let's release the hands down. Come back to our tabletop. So 
setting my blocks out of my way. And from here, let's then tuck the toes under, hop up to downward facing dog once again. We won't be here for too long, but then from our downward facing dog, beginning to walk the feet towards the hands or hands towards the feet, either one is just fine. When the hands and feet meet, inhale to gently look up, lengthen fingertips, or if that's too much, hands to the thighs or the knees. Exhale, soften, bend your knees, head and neck is heavy here. Reverse your swan dive, weight of the body shifts into the heels, take the arms out from the shoulders, and gentle arch back. And exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana Mountain Pose. And I'm going to face the front. You don't have to, but inhale, take the arms up. Long side of the ears. Let's grab the left wrist, my right, but your left to reach and stretch. Upper shoulder draws back to open the heart. Inhale through to center, switch the grip up. Exhale opposite side inhale through to center palms to touch exhale hands to heart center tadasana mountain pose half sun salutes inhale shoot your fingertips down out and up gentle arch back exhale swan dive it in head and neck is heavy sit bones lifting away from the heels Weight of the body in the front of the feet, not so much in the balls, or I'm sorry, not so much in the heels. Inhale to gently look up, lengthen. Exhale, soften, bend your knees, head and neck is heavy. Weight of the body shifts into the heels as you take a nice full inhale to come on up. Gentle arch back. Exhale, hands to heart center. Tadasana mountain pose. Last time, inhale, shoot the fingertips down, out, and up. Gentle arch back. Exhale, swan, dive it in. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to soften. Reverse your swan dive. Gentle arch back. And exhale, hands to heart center. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, shoot the arms up, long side the ears, grab your right wrist, my left, but your right, reach, stretch to the side. Inhale through to center, switch the grip up. Exhale, reach and stretch. Inhale through to center, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Lovely. Taking feet about hip distance apart, or I'm sorry, not about hip distance apart, uh, wider than hip distance apart, about uh, the width of your mat. And we're going to just come into standing cow cat stretch. So for standing cow cat, I'm just going to bend my knees here and my hands are going to rest on my knees. And right now I have my thumbs to the, my inner thighs, but I actually prefer turning my hands so that my thumbs are resting to my outer thighs. So take a second, play with that, see what feels best to your wrists, and then we'll go ahead and move in and out of our standing cow cat. So just, as, so just like if we were on our hands and knees, inhale, you're still going to glide your heart forward, lift your sit bones, look up if you can. Exhale, round the back, tuck the chin towards the chest. And again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And continue with this movement at your own pace for two more rounds. And no rush, but as you finish that last round, come back through to center, 
gently press into the feet, straighten the legs, <clears throat> excuse me, and relax your shoulders away from the ears. Now, taking feet about hip distance apart here, we're going to come into um, Warrior Two, Virabhadrasana Two, followed by Reverse Warrior, and then we're going to move into a couple of variations of Side Angle Pose. So, and you know what? Let's actually practice Side Angle Pose first, and then we'll add those other two poses before Side Angle. Because um, practicing side angle, and what I want to show you, can get a little get a little tiring. I don't want us to have to hold it for too long. So side angle pose. Have a yoga strap handy, or if you don't have a yoga strap, feel free to grab a men's necktie, or uh, if you have a scarf that you don't mind using. And I like to fold my yoga strap in half, and then again just so I don't have so much to work with here. And depending on um, your flexibility, this might actually be a little too short. So you'll just undo that. And so you'll have a longer strap to work with, okay? So again, I'm just gonna kind of set that out of my way. And I'm also gonna grab a yoga block. Uh, if you don't have a yoga block, you consider getting um, a book, pause the video, go grab a book, maybe two books. Uh, you could also use a soup can. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. It works though. Now, okay, so coming into Parsvakanasana or side angle pose. Same setup as Virabhadrasana 2 and Reverse Warrior, which remember, we're going to add that in just a moment here. But so you'll step the feet out wide ankles under wrists. Let's start with the left side. So we're going to externally rotate left toes out from the hip. Right toes are slightly turned in. We're looking for heel to instep or heel to heel alignment, which you probably can't see my feet because of those props being in the way, but heel to instep or uh, heel to heel alignment, relaxing your shoulders away from the ears. Inhale here. Now, as you exhale, we're going to bend in to that left knee, finding this 90 degree angle. Left forearm comes to rest to the thigh. And when I say rest, please don't just kind of hang out lifelessly here like this. <laughs> we want to pull left side ribs away from thigh, right side ribs, almost like we had a little string pulling us up towards the sky here. These ribs lift towards the sky. Now your right hand can either be reaching towards the sky or my personal favorite, I like to give that arm a swoop above the ear. Okay, so this is variation one. Variation two, we're going to drop our hand towards or to a block. So I'm going to take my block, I'm going to set it to the inside of my foot. And I'm going to take the back of my arm and gently press it in to my knee, my inner knee. So this is variation two. Variation three, we come into a bind. So for binding, you are going to Take your yoga strap. Now, I like to remember this by, okay, I'm practicing the left side, so my left arm comes forward in front of the leg. Opposite arm comes behind the back. So, I'm gonna first show you this with the yoga strap. You're going to, you know what, I'm just gonna keep it this way. I know I said you could fold it in half, but it's a little easier to maneuver with it. Just fold it in half once, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm here. And without, and I forgot to mention, if you don't, maybe you don't need to use the extra height with the block. You can absolutely put your hand to the floor here instead. So binding, you are going to take your left arm forward, through and your palm is going to be up towards the sky. 
your left arm comes behind the back and we hold the yoga strap, drawing that upper shoulder back. Breathe. Now, maybe you don't need the yoga strap. Maybe your hands can grip here. Fingertips can grip here. You can absolutely do that too. Now, using the strength of that right leg, inhale, woo, yourself through to center. And let's practice that on the opposite side. And you know what? I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to spin around for this next, when we get to the binding part, just so you can see how exactly we're binding. Right toes out from the hip, left toe slightly turned in. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, bending into that right knee, finding that 90 degree angle to then take the right forearm to rest to the thigh. Remember, no hanging out, don't hang out. Side ribs, don't let your teacher catch you hanging out here. <laughs> uh, side ribs move away from the thigh. Upper side ribs will reach towards the sky. Or again, my personal favorite, I like to swoop the arm here. It's up to you. I won't know what you're up to because I can't see you. Now from here, let's move a bit further. With your yoga block or with your right hand, drop it to the inside or outside. You can take it to the outside of the foot. Inside is a little less challenging. Outside is more traditional and more challenging. Don't forget to draw back of arm into the inner knee to help open the heart here. Now here comes the bind. And I'm actually gonna spin around this way. So it's still your right. So as mentioned, let me get into the pose first. Okay, so as mentioned, you're going, we're on the right side, my left, but your right. You're going to, that is the arm that is going to come forward, under, palm is facing up, opposite arm, comes behind and we draw the shoulder, upper shoulder back. Make sure you're breathing. You can always unbind at any time. Gently releasing your bind and using that strength of that left arm, left leg on come up. And let's just take a moment to heel toe, heel toe feet in, maybe give the legs a nice shake, shake, shake. Now, something to be mindful of in side angle. Don't give yourself what I call a yoga thong. I see it all the time in classes. Your bind comes around the thigh. In other words, it's not, it's not here. I, as mentioned, the yoga, this is what I mean by yoga thong. It's not, you're not giving yourself a thong. It's not here. It's around the thigh. Okay? So just something to be mindful of. If you find yourself kind of giving yourself the, the yoga thong, the chest is dropping towards the floor. Chest is open into the front in side angle pose. Maybe stick to... Uh, the first variation with the hand, or I'm sorry, the arm resting on the thigh, or the second variation where you drop the hand to the earth or, or a block, and you can always work up to that, up to that bind, okay? So there's side angle pose for you. Let's come into more, um, I'm sorry, warrior two, reverse warrior, and then we'll try that side angle pose again. So coming towards the uh, center of your mat, go ahead and step your feet out wide, ankles under wrists, externally rotate left toes out from the hip, right toes slightly turned in, inhale here, exhale to warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, we allow the hips to sink, find that 90 degree angle with that left leg, tailbone release towards the earth, relax your shoulders, Right armpit lined up over right hip. 
Make sure that your right, I'm sorry, your left knee isn't falling in or out. Reverse that warrior, flip your palms up, reach and extend out through that upper armpit, all the way up through the fingers. Make sure you're just lightly resting your hand to the back of the leg, not pressing into the knee. Side angle, inhale, exhale, find your side angle, whether that's here in variation one, dropping a bit lower to variation two, or binding. So we're on the left side, left arm comes through, my palm, left palm is facing up towards the sky, so I can then connect, grip with my fingertips or use my yoga strap. Breathe. Excellent. Inhale yourself back through to center. Woo! Exhale, release. Let's heel toe it in just for a moment here. Give your legs a shake, shake, shake. <sighs> Relax your shoulders. Take a couple breaths here. And let's try that again. Starting from Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Externally rotate right toes out, left toe slightly turned in. Exhale, warrior two. Strong arms here. Remember, almost as if I was going to come over to you and try to push your arms down, and you're not going to let me do that. Turn your palms up. Exhale, reach and stretch into your reverse warrior. Be mindful that your front knee didn't fall in towards the big toe. And exhale, finding your variation and expressing your best variation of Parsvakanasana side angle in your practice today. Again, no yoga thongs. Breathe. Now inhale, release your bind. Turn your palms up, reaching, stretching it up towards the sky. Exhale, let's frame that right foot. Lift your back heel, spin the back foot forward, downward facing dog. Pedal things out here. Wiggle the hips. Beginning to walk the feet towards the hands or hands towards the feet. Whatever you choose is just fine. Gently look up, lengthen. Good, exhale, soften. Reverse your swan dive. Gentle arch back and exhale. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Let's just pause here. Relax your shoulders. Little micro bend to the knees. Close your eyes. Connect with your breath. Relaxing face muscles. Relaxing tongue and jaw. Allowing your eyes to gently flutter open as you're ready, only when you're ready. And let's go ahead and take hands to the hips. Now for balance today, we're going to practice the Vrikshasana or tree pose. Um, feel free to come off your mat to some wall space or I have this ledge where this window is. Feel free if you have something like that to come over to, maybe even grab a chair. Um, if you know your balance is typically a little shaky or if you need a little extra support. So feet, as mentioned, are going to be about hip distance apart. Begin to shift your weight into right side body, my left, but your right. 
and I'm going to pick my left knee foot up, take it forward, continue to draw this right hip in, and then I'm going to take the knee out from the hip. Now, as I place my foot, I'm going to take, make sure that it's either above or below my knee. We don't want to press into the knee. You can take your toes to the mat, knee out from the hip. Again, it balance feels a little shaky here. So lifting the sternum, but relaxing your shoulders as you add arms. Notice if your left hip is creeping up towards the armpit. If it is, release it down. Hip square towards the front. Breathe. Now, if this isn't challenging enough for you today, maybe try, oh, there I go, shaking a little bit. Maybe try looking up towards the sky. Now, before we come out of our tree pose, we're going to draw that left knee forward and let's kick it forward, pausing here. Breathe. And let's take that leg out. Steady, controlled, and release. Give the legs a good shake, shake, shake. And let's practice our tree pose on the opposite side. Hands to the hips, shift weight to your uh, left side body. Right knee comes forward. Then take the knee out. You can always take the foot up a little higher on the leg, a little lower. Don't place it on the leg at all, but bring toes to the mat and externally rotate that knee out from the hip. Add your arms as you feel ready. Release the right hip down away from the armpit. Sternum's lifted, but shoulders relaxed. And I think I'm going to change up my arms this time. Feel free to do so. I'm going to come into I'm feeling these cactus pose arms today. And again, stay here or maybe try looking up. Now, instead of just releasing, let's Take the arms up alongside the ears. Remember, let's try taking the leg forward. Excellent, and very slowly, we're going to begin to take that leg out from the hip. And exhale, Whew, release, nice job. Go ahead and set any of your props out of your way, coming towards um, the back of your mat. Or you know what? Back of your mat. Why not? <laughs> Inchworm sun salute. Inhale. Shoot your fingertips down, out, and up. Gentle arch back. Exhale. Swan dive it in. Head and neck is heavy. Gently look up. Lengthen. Now here comes the inchworm part. As you exhale, either with straight legs or you can absolutely bend your knees here, you're going to begin to walk your hands forward to come into your plank. Inhale, as you exhale, go ahead and release the knees down, tops of the feet down. We're going to shift the hips back to sit on the heels to come into more traditional Balasana or Child's Pose, where you'll still rest your forehead, but then your hands are gonna be back towards your feet elbows, so your palms are facing up, elbows just are heavy and released open towards the earth here. Now coming into something called rabbit pose, we're going to look like little rabbits from the side. You'll interlace your fingers behind your back, so my hands arms are just resting to back body for now. Now as I inhale, I'm going to roll up onto the crown of my head, and then I'm going to take my hands, arms away from back body. So as mentioned, we look like little rabbits from the side, and our arms are making the ears. Inhale, exhale, release. Hips back towards the heels. 
release the hands, press hands, or place hands, excuse me, under the shoulders, and then press into the hands, and then allow yourself to come on up to sitting. Relax your shoulders. Now, grabbing your yoga strap, and my couch always gets in the way for this next bit, we're going to come into our hand to big toe pose series. So you may, like me, want to move your mat so you have plenty of space to practice this, um, this pose. And we'll move into Shavasana, not quite yet, but shortly. So you may want to grab any props that you like to use. Uh, if you took a couple, some layers off for practice, um, feel free to put that back on. Because then you're all set and you don't have to um, get up. To get anything. You'll be all set and ready to go for Shavasana. So with that said, I'm going to lay back. I'm going to place my yoga strap in the bottom of my right foot. I always suggest more so the ball mount of the big toe, not so much the arch. Relaxing the feet, spiraling the inner left thigh, Inhale, as you exhale, you'll begin to gently pull the right leg towards you until you start to feel a nice stretch along the back of that leg. Relax your face muscles here, relax your tongue and jaw. Grab the yoga strap in the right hand. Left arm is going to come straight out from the shoulder. Palm faces down. And allow your right leg to release open over to the right. You can look out over left fingertips if it's not too much for your neck. And inhale. Come back through to center. Grab the strap with your left hand. As you exhale, right arm comes out from the shoulder. Palm faces down. I'm gonna allow my couch is still in the way. There we go. I'm gonna allow my right leg to release over to the left. Right shoulder blade connected to the earth. You can look out over your fingertips or close the eyes. And stay here. Or if you'd like to try that fork variation, You'll begin to bend your left knee. So see how my left heel kind of comes up towards my left buttock. And then I'm going to take my right hand and see if I can catch my left foot. And breathe. And release everything. Come back through the center. And we're just going to switch legs up. So strap comes along bottom of the left foot, flexing both feet. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and begin to pull that left leg towards you to feel a nice stretch along the back of the leg. Grabbing the yoga strap in the left hand, right arm comes out from the shoulder, palm faces down. Exhale, I allow my left leg to release open. Over to the left, look out over right fingertips if you can. Close the eyes if you like. Seeing if you're holding any tension anywhere. You can release any of that with your next exhale. Inhale, taking left leg to center. Grab the yoga strap with the right hand. Left arm out from the shoulder. Palm faces down. And exhale, release over to the right. Now stay here or See if you can start to bend your right knee. Right heel comes up towards the right buttock. Reach down with your left hand. Turn the direction up. Good. 
and inhale as you exhale. Go ahead and gently release. Come set your yoga strap out of the way. Take knees to the chest for a moment. Give them a squeeze. And then as you come back through to center, go ahead and extend the arms out from the shoulders. And <clears throat> excuse me, shoot your tootsies up, your toes up towards the sky. Now, as you exhale here, we're going to come into a twist. Now, this is a challenging twist. Please keep in mind that your that both of your shoulder blades should be resting to the floor here. Now, as you exhale, we're going to allow those legs to gently release over to the right and pause. Look out over left fingertips if you can. Again, if the left shoulder blade is lifting up, take the legs a little closer to center. And inhale, come back through to center. Exhale, let's take that twist to the opposite side. Don't let your right shoulder blade pop up. In other words, if you're like this right now and your legs are touching to the earth, you need to root that shoulder blade back through to center. Maybe try it again. Shoot the toes up. I remember I said this is a challenging twist. And you can look out over right fingertips if you choose. And inhale. <laughs> Come through to center. Exhale, give the knees a hug to the chest once again. Little rock from side to side. And let's go ahead and begin to move into final rest, Shavasana. So if it's not comfortable for you to lay on your back for Shavasana, remember you can lay on your side, you can lay on your stomach. Um, you can even take Shavasana sitting up if you like. It's really up to you. Um, you can also take constructive rest by taking feet wide to the sides of your mat, knees falling towards each other, and then you'll just rest your hands wherever's comfortable to you. I think I'm going to take constructive rest today, actually. This feels pretty comfy to me today. <clears throat> so as you start to come into your final shapes for Shavasana, before you get too settled in, just take a moment, check in where weight of the body, or if weight of the body rather, is distributed evenly along the floor. And then once it is, I encourage you to lift the hips up and just scoop your butt towards the end of the mat or towards your heels. Close your eyes, begin to relax your face muscles, relax your tongue and jaw, neck and shoulders and chest, arms, hands, fingers, stomach and hips, buttocks, thighs, knees, shins, calves, ankles, and feet. Releasing any tension out through your toes. Taking rest here, enjoying and absorbing the effects of your yoga practice today.
really start to bring small movements back to the body. Beginning to wiggle fingers and toes, ankles and wrists in any way that feels good to you. Taking a nice long stretch, extending out through the fingers, all the way up through the toes, and widening the whole body here. And then, once again, taking these to the chest if you'd like, give them a squeeze, a little rock from side to side. And then gently releasing the knees, allowing yourself to roll to either side of the body. I'm just pausing here for a moment, thinking of your intention, dedication for that set one, noticing how you feel, perhaps even mentally thanking yourself for taking time out of your day to do something good for body, mind, and spirit. And then using the strength of your hands, arms to gently push yourself up to your comfortable seated positions. Drawing the arms up alongside the ears for one last final stretch. As you exhale, hands find their way to the heart, head surrenders towards the heart. Thank you so much for your energy and effort today. I hope you embrace the sense of well-being that you've created for yourself and take that with you through the rest of your day. I wish you peace in your minds, peace in your words, and love in your hearts. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for some Hatha yoga practice today. I hope the practice left you feeling great, uh, peaceful, energized, yet grounded. And until next time, take care and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.